BitFocus Companion 4.0 is here and continuing to change how we do live production by giving us easy access to control well, almost every device from these Stream Deck controller buttons. And this is especially true in the church tech world where I seek to train and equip leaders to do church, tech, and event production with excellence. If we have not met, I'm Nathan from Crazy Amazing Designs. At my church, we have companion buttons set up to turn our projector on and off. We also control our PTZ camera presets. And at times, we control our ATEM video switcher from our front of house position. I do a lot of videos on this channel about ProPresenter, which can also be controlled from Companion, but most ProPresenter actions are better when they're automated through macros from within the ProPresenter presentation software. And be sure to download BitFocus Companion and follow along with me in this video. Companion is free and open source. I'm gonna walk through installing Companion, connecting a control surface, and then connecting two devices and controlling them. One reason that BitFocus Companion has become so popular is because Companion integrates with these Stream Deck controllers. When connected via USB to a computer running Companion or through Companion through the satellite application, the Stream Deck becomes a hardware controller allowing users to push buttons configured inside of Companion and those buttons can be programmed to control most functions of many devices. So let's get started in Companion. I'm gonna open up Safari on my MacBook Pro and we're gonna to go to bitfocus.io, which is the website. And at the top right, you can click sign in or sign up if you've not created an account, go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go ahead and log into my account. And once we're logged in, we'll be able to go on the left side to the downloads page. And now you can see here a bunch of download options. And really this Companion one is the one we're gonna use. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the stable 4.0.2. They just released this huge update. I have a Mac Apple Silicon, so I'm gonna go ahead and download it for that. And then this will go ahead and just take a moment to download. BitFocus just released Companion version 4.0 recently, and it's added some really cool new features, such as connections, and now we have modules, so you can update the device connections independently of a new Companion update coming out. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this and now it'll bring up to my desktop. Okay, I'm gonna drag the companion into my applications folder and sounds like it's good. I'll close this. I'm gonna open up Finder and then I'm gonna to go to applications and I am going to double click on companion. So what this is gonna do is companion is an application that runs basically in the browser. So I'm gonna click open so it's gonna load up this page. So this is kind of the launcher for Companion. And we have a few things here. You can see what version we're on. Uh, you can change the network interface. There are some settings we can start at minimize so that this doesn't come up every time. And we can tell it to run at login. Okay, so now when we're ready, we can click launch GUI or graphical user interface. And here we are back in the browser. It's created a new tab. So on the left side here, we have our connections. And then there's a bunch of stuff underneath of that. So we have our connections. Ultimately, we also have modules down here. So on the connections page on the right side here, I'm gonna go ahead and find something to connect to. I have ProPresenter on this computer. So let's just type in ProPresenter. So Renewed Vision ProPresenter. I'm gonna add this and we'll do the latest stable build. So now on the right side, I'm gonna get some configuration information for ProPresenter. So let's go back to my desktop and let's go hide this. I'm gonna go load ProPresenter. And once ProPresenter is up, we're gonna to go to settings, network, because we wanna make sure that network is enabled. So if it's not, like it's not on my computer, we can go ahead and enable it. And now we wanna enable remote, and we wanna make sure we give this a password. So we'll enable the password and we'll give it a password. Very secure. Okay, so now we can also see our IP address. So 1.99 and our port number. So I'll copy this just in case it changes. So now I'm gonna go ahead and type in the IP address, and then I'm gonna copy and paste our purpose in our port. Okay, what do we got wrong? Oh, I didn't put the password in. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now we have it. So now we have a connection, we need connections in order to control stuff. So now let's go to the next tab down, which is the buttons. So this is a virtual representation of a Stream Deck controller. And you can see on the left, there are some navigation buttons so that when you have a control surface, you can go to the next and previous pages. Unlimited pages can now be created inside of this software. So what we're gonna do here is create a new button. So I'll just click anywhere, create button. 
with our new button on the right side here, I can now delete our button, clear that, I can make my button back again. Uh, you can test it, currently there's nothing going on on this button, I can set a name, ProPresenter, I can change the font size, I can make it even smaller, I can make it even smaller, I can change the background color, there's a lot of stuff I can do in here, I can also change the make it an image, um, if you want to put a logo on a button or something, but we're going to go down to the press actions and release action. So press action is obviously when you push it, it does this, but then release action is when you pull, let go, that's the release. So you can add actions for both of those. So to figure out what actions are available to us, we're going to go to the right side here and click on the red folder. And now you can see that there's some internal stuff that I can trigger from this button, but I could also go to ProPresenter and I can control all of this stuff. So let's go ahead and find our ProPresenter set look. We'll go ahead and click done. So now it is live looking at my instance of ProPresenter and it is seeing all of the different looks that I have set up. So in the top right of ProPresenter, I've got all these different looks. And if I open up the looks window, on the left side here, I've got all these looks. So the idea behind these is that uh, the default one, this is kind of our default. Um, if something happens, click this, and it'll put the same thing on e whatever's on the operator screen, it'll put that on all the other screens. And then there's one for worship and one for the sermon and some different stuff. So what I'm gonna do here is on our new button, I'm gonna set up some looks. So I'm gonna change this one to the default full screen. And let's go ahead and make this bigger. Okay, cool, that looks good. Okay, and now when you click this, it'll change it to the look full screen. So let's go ahead and change it to worship. And now I'll go over here and hit test and then I'll go back and it should be set to full screen. Okay, so we could also shift and then click on a button. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this button three times. We are gonna set this next one to worship. And then we're gonna set this next one to sermon. Cool, okay, so now we should be able to, let me minimize this. Actually, I'll do that, that way I can still see it. So now sermon, you see in the top right it's changing. Sermon, worship, full screen, perfect. Another awesome feature inside of Companion are feedbacks. Feedbacks can be put on any single button and basically it dynamically updates a button's appearance like the colors or the text based on the state of a connected device or variable. So let's go see what we can do by pulling information from ProPresenter and when ProPresenter is in a certain state with our looks for example, we will change the color of the button. So feedbacks are basically going to look at something in ProPresenter and then it's going to change something about the button based on what it sees. So to add a feedback, I'm gonna click on the button that I want to add the feedback for and then there's a feedback tab and I'm gonna to go to the right again and again find my browse my feedback. So I'm gonna click on ProPresenter and these are all the options available. I'm gonna click on change colors based on active look. And then here you can see in the bottom right, I can now change the foreground color or the background color. And then I can also, of course, change the look from a different one. So I'm gonna change colors based on active look. And then once we do that, it'll turn green when the look is active. So this is the sermon one. So I'm gonna change this to sermon full. And I'm gonna go to the worship look. I'm gonna go to feedbacks. And instead of clicking over here and going and finding it manually, I'm just gonna click here. And it's gonna show me what things have been used recently. So we'll change this one to worship and then we'll go to the full one and we will add one more and we will change this to full. Okay, so now let me make this small again. Not only do we have buttons that we can control ProPresenter from our control surface, now we can see if the buttons are active. So if I hold shift and click look full, you can see it changes to default and it also gives me the green indicator that it's active. Now I'm gonna go and switch directions. I'm gonna change it in ProPresenter and show that it changes in Companion. So there's there we go, isn't that really cool? So either direction is really helpful. So if you wanna create a screen on your Stream Deck that allows you to see what look is active, for example, that's like one of a million examples. Let's go ahead and plug this controller in and see what happens. So I have a USB-C cable plugged into my computer. I'm just gonna take the back off of this controller and then I'm gonna plug it in USB-C on the back of the Stream Deck. And now it should light up and it'll automatically connect to Companion. If I go down on, this, on Companion to Surfaces, and I'll make this full screen again, 
Uh, you can rescan USB if it doesn't find it, but you can see here that it has found my Stream Deck uh, XL. You can see the type here is XL. It's connected via local. And I can click on settings and I can set the current page. So basically at the top here, I can change uh, to use last page at startup. So whatever it stopped on, that's what it's gonna use when it starts up. I might just wanna change that to one. And then I can also change the current page from one to whatever else. So I can click close on that. So that shows you that that is connected, which is really cool. And uh, when I change things on the screen, you can see that it updates things on the buttons. And when I update things on the buttons, it changes it on the screen. So Stream Decks, very useful. Now I've got a control surface that I can put on my desk and I can control everything about my setup just from here. The BitFocus Companion software is so much more powerful than Stream Deck's native software. There, because it's open source, there's just so many more like plugins and different things that you can do inside of Companion at the moment. Maybe in the future, definitely Stream Deck software is gonna get better, but for now, Companion is the way to go. Well, I think that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe to Crazy Amazing Designs on YouTube, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.